Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and we're back for 10 more tips. This time it's 10 random tips in InDesign CS5. And just as the last couple of weeks we've done Photoshop, we've done Illustrator, now we're doing InDesign. These are 10 random tips, most of which, or all of which, of course, work in CS5. But some of these tips actually go back a few versions, so you'll be able to take advantage of it even if you're not on CS5 yet. So let's go ahead and dive right into our first tip. The first tip is actually the way that InDesign CS5 handles grouping or the groups of objects now. So for example, I've got a group here, and we'll go ahead and zoom in on it so you can see it a little bit better. And one thing I can tell right off the bat is that it's a group because of the bounding box that's around the whole thing now. And normally if I wanted to affect like the letter C or do something to it, I would have to ungroup first to drill down into it. But now I can just double click, that drills down into the first subgroup, double click again, that drills down into the next subgroup, double click again until I get to the object I want. Make any changes I want to that object, for example, I'll just make it a little taller, click out of it and it's still grouped together. So it's as if I had worked on it as if it had not been grouped because I didn't have to use the ungroup command at all. Now I have this object over here, that was your first tip by the way, I have this object here that is not a part of the group. As you can see it's not inside the bounding box. Now if I wanted to add that to the group, normally that would be, you know, either ungroup everything and then add it or group it as another subgroup. But in this case we're going to just go ahead and take a look at InDesign CS5's new layer panel. The layers panel uh, is now just, it's very, very useful. We can now get into the actual individual objects themselves so I can drill down until I get to that right bar. So I can turn individual objects on or off, which is another bonus tip, without having to turn off the entire layer. And now if I can see the groups of objects by the little triangles in front of them. So that whole masthead head is a set of groups and the logo type of course is another subgroup in there. If I wanted to put right bar inside that group, all I have to do is drag it within the boundaries of that, uh, that group or subgroup and now it's a part of the group. So just that easy, I can add things or take things out of a group just by handling that in the layers panel itself. So as you can see, that's tip number two and very useful tip for dealing with groups. Now we're going to go over to our next tip, which is tip number three, and it's a problem with uh, this particular Photoshop image. I've got a Photoshop image here with the models here in the background, and I've got some, looks like pretty jagged model text here, so let's, let's see if we can make that look better. Let's right click on it and do a high quality display, and see if we can clean that up a bit. Doesn't look like we can in this case. Hang on, let's see if I've got the right thing selected here. We do. Display formats, there we go, high quality display. So we'll clean that up a little bit. Now, but that wasn't the tip, that wasn't the problem. The problem is that text, I don't want it. That text is from the Photoshop file and it's interfering with my text in my InDesign document. But I can't go into to this and do anything with it. I can't drag it or delete it or do anything unless I go into Photoshop to take care of it. However, since that's just a text layer, the one thing I, I can do within InDesign is turn that layer off without having to go to Photoshop. So with the image selected, we'll go up to our object menu, we'll come down to object layer options, and with object layer options, there it is. There's our models text layer, and we just turn it off right here in InDesign, click OK, and it turns it off inside this particular instance of InDesign for that Photoshop file. So you do have the ability to turn specific layers and layer comps on or off for Photoshop files in any InDesign document and that's not a new feature that's been around for the last couple versions of InDesign. Alright so now we're going to scroll down and we're going to go over here to a empty page here and of course InDesign CS5 can now have uh, not only multiple pages as it always could but multiple pages of different size and different orientation. And on this side panel, I'd love to place some text that was created on the, in the cloud. It was created using a free service called 
Buzzword. Buzzword is one of the many free services available at Acrobat.com. All you have to do is sign in with your Adobe ID, go to Buzzword, and you can start creating word processing documents. And the beauty here is not so much that you can create word processing documents in the cloud, but they can be collaborative, meaning that other people that you share this document with can also make changes and add input and make corrections directly inside the document. Now, again, that's a that's been around for a while. That's not a new thing. We've had Buzzword for quite a while now, but what's new is I've got this Getty, Gettysburg address that I just made a change to. And now I'm going to go ahead and go back to InDesign because in InDesign CS5, one of the new things is that we can place directly from a buzzword. That's right, you do a place command from buzzword, you sign in with your Adobe ID, it will show you all of your buzzword documents, and you even have the ability to link to that document so that if any changes are made, you can bring in those changes right into your InDesign document that you're placing this in. So it's downloading a, a linked version of that, loading my place cursor as it would if I had placed any other word or text file, and now I've got that place text directly inside of InDesign and I can go back to the cloud, make any changes or any of my colleagues make changes. I will get the updates in my InDesign document. All right, so let's go ahead and jump down a few pages here. Let's go to page 11. And in page 11, I want to make some changes to some text. And again, I may uh, send this out to be changed by other people as well. And if I want to see who made which changes to what or what changes have been made in general, even by myself. I now have the ability in InDesign to do what's called track changes. So you'll find the track changes panel under your window menu, under editorial, it's a brand new panel inside of CS5. Once we bring that panel up, there's a simple on and off button. We can go ahead and turn on, here we go. Go ahead and turn on track changes. It's on now. So if I go in and make any changes to the story, so we'll change local to domestic, now, when I bring this up in the story editor, which is, uh, I believe it's under edit, let's see, edit and story editor, there we are, it will show me not only the change that was made, but if I click on the change, it will show me who made it and when in the track changes panel. So it's a cool way to have the ability to know what was changed in the document. So here it clearly shows that the word local was taken out and, and replaced with domestic. I can right click on that and either accept that change or reject the change. Now, if I reject it, it's rejecting two changes. There was the deletion of the word local and then of course the adding of the word domestic. So if I re reject both changes, then it will put the word local back. 